Hey folks, welcome back to the 2011 LAPC. I am here with a very familiar face, which needs no introduction, but as not giving an introduction and interview is awkward, here's Phil Helmuth Jr. Uh, Phil, it's day two, we just finished it out. How much did you bag up with? Um, I think I had 128,000. So, you know, I don't know what the average is, but it's probably, uh, you know, 70 or 80, right? So feels pretty good you know I, I'm using a strategy that I haven't used in a long time um, I've gone back to playing really really patiently mm -hmm. and uh, you know in two days I've had zero incidents I mean it's just been very smooth as yeah I've never really gotten myself in bad shape at all uh, I'm folding hands I never dreamed of folding I mean someone will raise I'll fold 10 jack suited I'll be dealt 8 9 suited middle position I'll just fold it these are hands which I've been playing and trying to gamble along with the kids and uh, you know those hands don't play very well for raises and re-raises so that's one thing that I kind of have discovered and feel like it's different if I have one of those hands in the big blind so I've kind of cut a lot of fat and I'm also being very aggressive. Now you're just on the big game right and uh, Lane Flack was your consultant and I noticed an odd little anomaly that you finished 50th and 51st at the end of day one. Is uh, Lane still in and are you guys uh, still closing chips? Lane really did help me. I mean, what he and I did is I hired him as a poker consultant. I paid him like $1,000 for the day and got him on Fox. And, you know, I mean, my ego is always so big that I always think I know everything. But you know something? I haven't won a tournament. I've been down there where I should have won a couple times last right. year, and the fields are bigger. But I have so much skill, I think, that I have to find out a way to come up with the right swing thoughts, you know. Like, I think Tiger Woods needs a good golf coach, you know. I think that uh, you know any great athlete needs help, and so I felt like he and I talking about strategy together. I didn't take everything he said, he didn't take everything I said, but together we devised a great strategy for this tournament, and uh, you know, and it, it involved you know just playing level one. You know, everybody's and I've won a fortune. I've won so many bracelets just by playing level one and having everybody melt down on my left, melt down on my right, bluff off their money, go crazy. And I just sat right in the middle and let all the chips come to me just by showing them hand after hand after hand. And, uh, you know, I, I think I got back to that a little bit. It's just too easy to get to level four where you think you can outplay everybody every hand. And uh, now tomorrow's day three, I'm going to have to play a little bit more. I'm going to have to yeah. come over the top a little bit more. Now it's time. But I basically have 128,000 and pretty much risk-free chips. It's never really risk-free, but it just so happens that I've never even been really close to all in in two days. Haven't put myself in any bad spots. You know, playing my hands straight up makes the game a little bit easier because people are afraid of me. When I'm playing super tight, they're really afraid of me. Well, look, you can't just assume that everybody's super afraid of me. But when I'm playing super tight and I'm laughing and I'm joking, they know how dangerous I am. And you know what? They don't really want to mess with that. Well, let me let me take it from there. I mean, we had you know the Bay 101 last year where you had uh, you know a, a final table where you knew you got it in well. And, and my take on that whole situation was, in your head, it was like I know this is going to go wrong. I know this is going to go wrong. And that's why it took you so long to call when I think at that position it was ready to go. Was was there that kind of negative No, I didn't think that at all. At all? No, I didn't think that at all. I thought I had to just make up my mind. It, take me, it didn't take me that long to call with the Queens, I don't think, did it? I thought in that situation against Seth, it, it maybe, but... Well, again, it was interesting I'm not because a final table, so. well, I limped in the small blind, and right. he raised, and I re-raised two hundred thousand into a hundred and forty thousand dollar pot. Yeah. So I just let him know I had the nuts, and then he still shipped anyway. So it took me a second to say, well, is this guy just crazy? I guess he is. I call, yeah. and uh, he had ace jack. I was not expecting to lose that hand, you yeah. know, and especially not in the river. So now when it comes king five six, I'm like, this is great. There's a ten on the turn, which is a little concerning because now. I can lose with a queen or an ace. Now he has five outs. Yeah. When the ace came on the river, I was just like in shock. I couldn't believe they did it to me. And he couldn't believe it. You know, I mean, I'd been ship leader of that tournament for about three days and playing great poker, never even close to all in for four days. And then to finally get in with queens and have, you know, the crazy guy have ace jack and hit an ace in the river, it was just, you know, very frustrating, you know. And then. 
Same thing in the Tour Championship. I, I played for six days and finished seventh. And six come back the next day. And if I could have come back the next day, who knows what would have happened. Well, let's ask you I about could that. easily have won that Tour Championship. And, and I'm referring to some of the things I think some of our, our viewers will know. With the WPT Magazine, we had the cover. We had Phil Helmuth, Comeback Kid. Had a very nice feature article in there in the cover, which uh, came out just in time for you to go make a final table at uh, the Bay 101. Uh, in that, you know, we talked about this is my comeback year. I'm going to be focusing on, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm boiling down uh, who I am and what I am, and I'm going to be back to being a full-time guy. Now, you're talking about being in that position, in that place, training up, but uh, I would say in that playdown, which took a very long time at the Bellagio, uh, very, very good players, an amazing selection of players. I don't think anybody would step into that, uh, you know, or, or ask for that if they were playing for that kind of money. And it really seemed like there were a few things where some old Phil came in to fight, you know, knocking over chip stacks and, you know, snap throwing the uh, iPod there at the end. Is that just you being emotional or do you feel like you're getting out of that zone that got you to that spot and got you through that field at Bay 101? I don't know. I don't remember knocking over too many, too many things. I mean, maybe one or two. What I remember is fighting really hard, getting to two and a half million, right. picking up Ace King against Eric Baldwin, and, and having to lay it down that for six hundred thousand. Right. Probably I shouldn't have laid it down. I mean, I, I don't know. I should have thought it out. Um, I did. I did have a bad feeling. I'd been a little bit steamed that I'd made it to the World Poker Tour final table with seven or eight left against Ivy, and I had Ace King suited and he had aces. You know, and just how, you know how. You know, a hand after I'd bluffed, and so I pick up Ace King seven-handed in the World Poker Tour Championship. He opens for two hundred thousand. I make it six hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And there's not that many hands he can ship with there. He decided to ship. He can have queens, kings, aces, or ace king. Really, I mean, but it's Baldwin, and and maybe he did have ace queen. You know, I mean, I saw him blow some pretty big chip leads. I thought about that later. It's possible that he had ace queen there. Mm -hmm. um, I laid down an ace queen earlier in the day to him that I, if I had to do over again, I would have called. And in that one, I had 900,000 stacked out, ready to call him, mm -hmm. and I should have just put in the money with the ace queen. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I had him that hand. The ace king hand, I don't know if I had him or not. Um, I don't really regret that. You know, it, it's frustrating to make it down that far. I think there's a difference. Last year, I was focusing on my mindset, and this year, I'm just focused purely on strategy and cards. All right. So and how is this and, and every great player wants to talk no limit hold'em with me because I have the best record on the planet. Right. over the last 25 years and no limit hold them. Jesus, that's pretty cocky. Um, <laughs> I, have, I have a pretty good record. and yeah. um, So everybody wants to talk with me. So, right. you know, um, it's it's been great for me to, you know, I've been talking with Lane a little bit, talked with Daniel a little bit. Um, but I just feel like I'm right where I need to be. I feel like, you know, you, you hear a lock, like it goes click, 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 ksh, and it snaps right into place. You feel like I'm you're back I'm snapped there. right into place right yeah. now. And you're thinking... You know, and there's, and in addition to being snapped into the right place, there's other factors. You have to be able to show up and play great poker. You have to be able to show up and, uh, and, and put yourself, you have to be able to show up and work hard. It's just so easy for me for the last few years to come into a tournament, the blinds are 50 and 100, I have 30,000 shares and I just get crazy. And chips, I just go crazy. Right. And so, you know, I haven't been as focused as I should be. I haven't taken it as seriously as I should have. But now it's time for me to prove to myself right. that, you know, that I can win some big tournaments in 2011. You know, I've been aching to play. I've been working on my game. I've been playing a lot of online events. Made a final table in a big online tournament. Don't want to say what site. Um, but I've been playing a lot of poker. I've been working really hard on No Limit Hold'em. I've been playing a lot of, like, No Limit Hold'em cash games, smaller size ones. And, you know, I'm just really kind of grouped. And so now I need to focus on strategy and realize what I'm doing wrong. Have you been One thing I discovered is that sometimes when I'm hungry, I play bad. Sometimes when I'm tired, I play bad. So when I get tired and hungry, it, you know, sometimes I lose it for five or ten minutes. In a side game, in a limit side game, you lose it five or ten minutes is no big deal. Right. You just go outside, clear your head, come back, and you're focused again. But you can't lose it for five or ten minutes in a tournament. So I felt that happen to me yesterday. I ran up, I grabbed some sushi, I came back down, mm -hmm. and I won a huge pot. And I think that, you know, with the right cards. And so, you know... You just have to be aware of everything. If you want to be great No Limit Hold'em player, if you want to win tournaments, you have to identify all your weaknesses. You have to identify the strategies that you want to play. Right. Are your reads working perfectly that day? That allows you to add more moves, and that's, that's it, you know? 
Well, there's been a, a, a big part of that change in everything you've got going on right now, of course, is the change in sponsorship, the move back to just PH and not the other two initials. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, you know how you feel coming away from that move and, and what that kind of change means to well, I'm future looking, Phil now. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the to the future. It means I have a lot less money coming in because I'm not having a site that pays me every month. Right. You know, but I have a lot of deals in place and I'm a pretty lucky guy in general. So, you know, I'm pretty excited uh, about what the future holds. I'm pretty excited about you know who I'm going to sign with, and we don't we will probably won't know till April who that's going to be. But it's been great to. We've had some fantastic offers from a lot of different sites, both traditional and non-traditional. Right. I can't talk about who I talk to because I think that if I say that, then the sites aren't happy. So, but I've talked to everybody, okay. and uh, I'm excited. You know, I mean, uh, you know, we're also talking to a major apparel company right now. Mm -hmm. Aston Martin just gave me a car. Really? I mean, for, for all right, whenever you're in L.A., you can have this monster car. With I mean, you turn it on, it's so beautiful. It has a center key console. In uh, fact, I have a Twit video of up at the, 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 you know, it's been getting thousands of hits of me starting the Aston Martin and the sound it makes. Mm, and so it's, my life thing. is was great, man. I mean, everything. It's the DB9. Oh. No, no, it's not. The, it's the Rapid. Oh, the new, ooh. The Rapid, and it's just fast, and it's fun, <laughs> and life is amazing. You know, I have all these, all these amazing deals. I'm the new, uh, well, I can't talk about it, but I just got a new big job, right. uh, you know, within the poker world. It's one of the most coveted jobs. And you know, there's still a possibility for Dancing with the Stars. So life is amazing right now. I mean, my wife and I, 21 years together, we seem to just keep getting better and better. Mm -hmm. I mean, my kids are great. Just ship I them off everything. to college? Is, is part of that your brain I, I have everything. you're back to focusing well, on Well, that's right. Now, now the kids, I know that my youngest is going to college in a few months, uh, six months or whatever, I'm in August, and uh, it's time for me to just focus on poker. You know, I get to write, I get to, I get to write my books, and I get to play poker. You know, and I, and I love it, you know, and so it's a challenge for me. I've taken, I've been a part-time player for seven years. People don't know that, yeah. you know, but I've been a part-time player for seven years. No top professionals missed as many WPTs as me, none, you know, and, and so your I put family number one. So your tournament played is, is a little bit lower than some well, of the other guys on top, Barry I mean, on having the most right now. I mean, yeah, yeah, when you play like 30% of the WPTs, you know, uh, yeah, it's hard yeah, to pick well. up a title, you know. Yeah. Um, but look, now that's all going to change, and you know, and now we have, you know, new levels in poker, and it's fun, and I'm just really enthused for the game right now, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and I want to say goodbye to everybody out there and, uh, and wish you all good luck. Okay. Play patiently. Okay.